Meisner makers, it's Wednesday, and you know what that means. Wednesday workshop at one. And in today's workshop, what we're gonna be doing is taking you one more level deeper into what you can do with the hot mess canvas technique. Now, if you're stumbling across this video and you're thinking, what is a hot mess? Well, a hot mess canvas or technique it's the idea of taking a canvas board, you're gonna paint some background on it, uh, you're going to cut a vinyl uh, stencil, and then lay your stencil over your painted canvas, paint back over it, remove the vinyl, I know this is really super quick, um, go back and review that video, and then you're gonna end up with a really unique piece of artwork that's going to match your decor and your seasons. So today, Jody's going to take you through um, some different ways to paint out those backgrounds and a, an additional layering technique to give it just a totally different um, look and feel than what we did in the original video. Now, before we go there, um, just a couple of background things that I want to share with you. Um, I, those of you who participated with us recently, I told you that I am just right now pillows. I'm making pillows, making pillows, making pillows. And while I'm making pillows, right, when I take a break from that, I'm like, ooh, that one's stuffed. I'm cutting things up. So uh, Jody's going to talk to you again, as I mentioned, uh, about how to cut those vinyl stencils. And um, I knew that she was going to do multiple samples, and you'll mm -hmm. point those out. You'll, you'll take our crew through those. But as we were prepping, I did my one set of sam hot mess sample, but then I started cutting some other things up. I already had my vinyl blade in there. And if you don't yet have one of the new auto vinyl blades, are yes. you impressed? Oh yes. I am I super it. impressed with this blade uh, because not only was I able to cut, and this is pretty detailed, but I know with that um, metallic, it's a little bit harder to see it. We'll get some close-ups of that. But I was also able to cut not just my sticky vinyl or my um, stencil vinyl, but my heat set vinyl. And cameraman Joel will get in there with some close-ups. But so look at those tiny, tiny little bones on that dinosaur. It amazes cool? me. The small, and it's like, it yep. doesn't, it just cuts. It just does it. And the, the teeth on the little monster here, and that fine, fine text. Um, now, all of these designs are from the design store. It's where I picked up those SVG files. And you can access the design store by going to our website under products, scan and cut, scan and cut files. So all of these that I'm showing you today are from the design store, cut with that little vinyl blade. Um, and then this one as well, Jody's going to be showing you some Valentine's projects. So I figured I needed to do one too. So, and I had to bling her up one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Now, speaking of your bling, <laughs> if you watchers at home, makers at home, would like to recreate a shirt like Jody's, then you'll want to take a look at the rhinestone starter kit. And I was so excited by the bling, I'm thinking this is going to have to be an upcoming episode. So we'll be planning for that yes. in the not too far distant future. So for today's projects, what you're going to need is a digital die cutter. We suggest the scan and cut. You'll need your auto vinyl blade. You will need some stencil paper. I could have remembered what it was called earlier had I looked at the stencil paper or stencil vinyl. And you'll need some transfer paper. Uh, the one other thing that you'll need, and we have some tips on this. Uh, Jody, do you want to talk about the two mats? Yes. Um, there is a low-tech mat and a standard tech mat. And when you're cutting uh, vinyl, you put paper side down. Mm -hmm. And um, I was cutting away and doing a great job. And I thought, you know what? This is not as sticky. I think I'll pull out my new one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hello. And it was your new standard mat. Stand, yes. And um, I spent a lovely evening last night, a half hour, scraping off all the paper that did not come off. Yes. And so I was trying to, you know, get it to stay better. Use a mat, if you're gonna use your standard mat, do not use a new one, use a low tack or use a standard mat that's been yep. used a lot. Yep. It comes off a lot nicer. Because if you think about it, if you're cutting paper, you would use a low tack mat. So this is a paper backed adhesive. You want, if you're paper side down, then you wanna use a low tack or a, what I call an older, close to ready to retire mm -hmm. standard mat. Uh, this is why we do this, so you don't have to pick paper off of your mat. 
So, <laughs> Jody, are we ready to go to the machine? Yes. Okay, cameraman Joel, are we ready to go to the machine? Yeah, let's go. All right. Okay, so on the first video that we did of Hot Mess, and Jennifer showed you earlier about how you can just take and put color all over your canvas. Well, I decided, mm, I wonder what it looked like if I did like an ombre effect. And this is what I came up with. So on these, I started off with a lighter pink, a medium pink, and a, and a actually red down here. So that's a that's an ombre effect. And then I just kind of wanted to go one step further and see if I can do um, a technique using a wood graining tool and create a wood graining effect. I was um, kind of going for shiplap look. So this is now I've done an ombre and then I did a painting technique called wood grain. And you can get the wood grain tools available. Um, I just Googled and they were kind of all over the place. So, um, so that one worked out really well. The only thing is, is I noticed that when you're putting in a, a lot of paint, you need to make sure that your design is down really, really well. I used four different, experiment with actually four different adhesives to make sure which one would bleed the least. Um, Oracle 651 gave me the best results because I'm pulling paint as I am rocking a tool back and forth. And I'll show you the tool in a little bit that created that. So then I decided I needed to Bob Rossi it up a little bit. So Bob Ross has got um, happy trees and happy, happy clouds. So I thought I would do an, a sky and an ocean thing. And down here, this is where I kind of overdid it with another color because this is what I'm going to put on it. And I kind of wanted it to be sky going down to ocean. And I have a little saying that goes right over there. And then I'm gonna come along and do the uh, wood grain technique on top of it out of a light gray and a little bit darker gray. So every place that has black, that is where you're going to see the background and everything else is gonna be painted light gray. And because I want my words to be a solid color, so I'm making it a positive stencil. I will actually put the saying on after I have done the stencil, I have painted it down and the light gray and then turn around and done the wood grade effect on top of it. Okay, so when you're gonna um, do an ombre effect, you do have to have a minimum of at least three colors. So the first one I painted with a light pink and I brushed it down about a third of the way and a little bit further. And then I took and got into my next shade, which is my medium value pink, and then started picking that up. And I kind of brushed it down and then walked it up a little bit and then continued to brush down. And the same thing with the red. I painted it down and then I started with straight red and started walking my red back up. And it, and it helped it blend those colors. Now, when it came to doing, after that dried, and I actually did let it dry for about three or four hours because that was a lot of paint that I was putting on. I did two coats of an off-white and then I did a um, one shade darker than off-white and I mixed that color with something that's called an extender. And what an extender does is it extends the drying time but it doesn't dilute the pigment. And I would brush it on in one area this is a wood graining tool and it has a big, big, uh, I don't know what you want, want to call them there, graining here and then little teeth here. And I can move my handle either way. And I know all of the tools are like that. And while this was wet, I would start up here at the very top. And as I'm pulling it, I'm rocking it until I go off. That's what creates your wood grain effect. I would blot this off on a paper towel, go ahead and do my next row as white as this is, start at the top, rock it and pull it, rock it and pull it. If you pull it more this way, you get a longer knot. And that's how I created that effect. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to 
Pull in a design into your Canvas workspace and transfer it wirelessly over to your um, cutting machine. So I've opened up Canvas workspace. I go to File, and then I go to Import from your computer. And it is now opened up an import window. And I actually have this design sitting on my desktop. I purchased it from the design store. Jennifer earlier told you how to go in and, and uh, get the design. So it's a lighthouse from there. And I'm going to open it. And there is my design. Now I'm going to shrink my screen a little bit so you can see it all. And at this point, um, I can shoot this uh, and transfer it over wirelessly, or I can, you know, maybe add words here. I can delete things. I can manipulate this. I can change whatever. But for the sake of this video, I am just going to go ahead and export this over to my machine. So this is all ready to go. I'm going to go up to File. And then I'm going to go Export Transfer FCM File. I'm going to click that. And it's going to pop up a little window and it's going to ask you, do you want to export your S SCM file, transfer your file, or tra using the internet or using a cable? I am going to go ahead and use internet. And it says the registered machine is ready to download the transfer file from the internet. Now, for this to work, you do have to make sure that your Scan and Cut is a registered machine with Brother. And uh, you will also have to register it also when you download the Canvas workspace. And I am using the one that is on the desktop and not the one on um, the internet. I'm not doing the online one, I'm doing the one on the uh, on uh, desktop. And you just hit OK. And as I showed you earlier, or I'll show you later, it was, um, we'll pull it up in the uh, wireless and uh, it's ready to go. That's how easy it is to work in work, a Canvas workspace. So you can transfer all your designs over like that and it takes no time at all. Okay, I have sent the design over wirelessly. So now we're gonna pull up the design that we are going to cut today. So we're gonna go to retrieve data And since I sent it over wirelessly, there's our design already. So it's it's ready. All I have to do is just tell it to cut. So I'm going to hit OK. The pattern says it's in an ineffect, ineffective area, which means I have to move it. So we're going to hit Edit. And we're going to hit Move. And let's move it up a little bit. So now it is no longer in an area that is outside of the cutting area. I'm going to hit OK. Hit OK again. We're going to hit OK again. We're going to go to Select Cut. We're going to make sure that this is doing a half cut because we only want to cut the vinyl. We don't want to cut the paper. But again, we know we have to do a test cut first. And there is our little test cut right there. So we'll go ahead and hit start. Matt is not loaded. Let's get the mat loaded. Okay, test cut is. Test cut is perfect. Let's start. Okay, so it has cut out the design. I have weeded it because you all know how to weed eat now. And then I put on my transfer tape. And once this, I need to uh, rub it down, but once I'm ready with this is all cut out and my transfer tape is all pressed on, I'm going to lift this and I'm going to center this 
a little bit over. So I'm not going to use this one right here because I have a saying that I want to put right here. And because I want it to be in black and I'm going to be putting on the wood graining technique, I need to do this part first, do all of my gray paint, and then I need to do my uh, wood grain technique once that's dried. Then I will cut another stencil where I am going to weed out the letters and I'm gonna put it right over here and I will um, paint on black letters. So this is really, uh, this project right here I'm doing is, is more of a four part process than what this one was just a couple of processes. So I just thought that you guys might be interested in seeing a different way of how to do hot mess. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed my um, idea on a different way of doing the hot mess. Um, in another life, I used to paint and I used to teach painting. So I thought I wanted to uh, see if I could take some of those techniques that I used to do and apply it to this. So whether you do ombre or if you do hot mess like this, or if you have a piece of artwork that you would like to upcycle, you can go ahead and do the same technique on this and it doesn't really matter which way you turn it, but you can come up with a really cool design for this one and you've upcycled something in your house that you're just kind of tired of. So I hope you enjoyed today's um, lesson and if you have any questions, just email at info at meisnersewing.com. Thank you very much for joining both of us and we'll see you next Wednesday. Bye-bye.